Hi, I'm Ann Campbell, and today I'm going to talk about the key features of SonarCube 9.5. Let's start with the speed of analysis. Faster analysis is a key focus area for us this year, and in 9.4 you saw that with faster Java analysis. In 9.5 we're bringing you faster C and C++ analysis by turning on multi-threading and analysis caching by default. These features have been available for a while, but you had to configure them manually, and it seems that most people just didn't. So we've turned them on for you by default, and what you'll see is that multi-threading scales to the number of CPUs on your analysis box. And analysis caching means that the duration of your analysis will be relative to the number of files affected by your change set. And for users of all languages, we've sped up the first analysis of Git-based projects. As an example, we analyzed the Matomo project on both SonarCube 9.4 and 9.5. Now this is a project with about 710,000 lines of code. On 9.4 that first analysis took 11 minutes 23 seconds, and on 9.5 it only took 4 minutes and 26 seconds. We did that by making the initial retrieval of blame data more efficient, and what it did was give us about a 60% increase in analysis speed. That's something I think everyone can appreciate, regardless of language. Next, I want to talk about coverage. So speaking of setting up analysis, we've seen that getting coverage information into your analysis is an area where people have struggled over the years. So with 9.5, we've overhauled the documentation on coverage to give you better specific guidance for the key languages. Hopefully, that's going to help a lot of people going forward. Moving on to the UI, uh, we have updated the issues interface to help you focus more tightly on the issue at hand, and also to make the rule description more obvious and easier to find. Speaking of issues, in C Sharp, we have expanded our support for C Sharp 10 by adding support for the record struct concept. So now 31 rules that didn't before understand what a record struct is and can correctly raise issues in a record struct. And that's what you're seeing here is issues raised by a number of those rules on, frankly, some demo code. Still in C Sharp, we have also added a rule to help you find um, deadlocks. So when you have a lock that's only conditionally released within a method, we're now going to raise an issue to help you find and avoid those runtime errors. On the topic of runtime errors, we have added five new rules in Java to help you find and fix runtime errors. So the categories for these rules are runtime exceptions, inappropriate collection operations, and my personal favorite, infinite recursion. So these are the five rules that we've added for Java runtime error detection. I'll give a dramatic pause here to let you eyeball them. And also in Java, in the, on the topic of security, now we've had a rule to help you detect hard-coded passwords for quite a while. So if you have a variable named something like password or passwd, etc., um, we would help you find that. What we weren't finding was other types of secrets. So we've added a new rule side by side with that to help you find secrets in variables named things like secret, token, credential, and so on. So when we see a pseudo random hard coded value for something named secret, we're going to raise an issue to help you fix that. Also in the security realm, for Python, we've added four new security hotspots to help you use the AWS CDK better um, to create S3 buckets. And moving on, still in the security realm, a lot of people are going to be happy to see this. We have reworked token creation. So now there are three different types of tokens, and if I want to create a token to analyze a specific project, I can do that. So if I pick this project, and let's name it appropriately, now I have a token that can be used only to analyze the project chestnut. The other thing we've done here is add a prefix to the token so that if I encounter this value in the wild, I can understand that I'm dealing with a sonar cube project token. Now there are two other types. There's the global analysis token. Notice that I'm not asked to pick a project. And it has its own prefix for sonar cube analysis token. 
And finally, there's the legacy token type, which we're calling the user token type. This is the type that we've had all along, which grants all of the permissions for the issuing user. And it also has its own prefix, sonar cube user. Now, since I've just published three tokens to the world, I'm going to go ahead and do my housekeeping while we're all looking and revoke these tokens. Finally, um, we have added a new report type at the project level. So you'll find it tucked up here under project information. It is call we're calling it the regulatory report. Although to be clear, there is no specific regulator or regulation that this corresponds to. But what it does do is give you a full detailed project status at the moment the report was created. So I created this particular report on May 25th. Um, this is the commit that was the most recent in the branch at the time I created the report. And on the first page here, I've got the full listing of the major um, values for the project for both new and overall code. On the second page, I've got all of the failing quality gate conditions. Now, we don't have any failing quality gate conditions because we did see on the front page that we had a passing quality gate. If it were failing, it would show us why here. And we've also, here under new code and overall code in the findings area, we have a full listing of the issues that exist in the project at the time the report was created. So we've got all open issues in this CSV, and we've got all resolved issues in this CSV. And by resolved, what we mean here is issues that have been marked by the developers false positive or won't fix. So you have comprehensive listings for that for both new code and overall code. And yes, the overall code listing does include what's in the new code. And finally, we have a full analysis context report. So first we have all of the analysis analysis parameters. So for instance, if an exclusion had been added to analysis on the command line, that would show up here. Uh, we have a full listing of the quality gate conditions, so we know what conditions were used to run the quality gate. We can make sure that the quality gate had every, all the tests in it that we expected to see there. And finally, we have a full listing of all of the rules in each of the quality profiles that was applied during the analysis. So a full and comprehensive listing of project quality at the moment the report was generated. And that's what I wanted to show you today. I'll see you next time.